Hello everyone, Mecha here, back with some more Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia tier list review. And this time we're looking at the Alm side of things. Last time in part one, we did Celica, and now we're doing Alm. And with me here once again is P. Vladias. How's it going? It's going pretty well, pretty well. Got, got my booster shot recently, you should all get vaccinated. Hit me pretty hard. But I'm doing good now, and I'm ready to raid some units. Let's go. I, uh, I'm getting my uh, Mia's only fans on Monday, personally. Looking forward to being knocked out or having no side effects. Oh, I see. Yeah. If you get side effects, uh, try not to get them at 6 p.m. It's a surefire way to ruin your sleep schedule. I'll work on it. Maybe I'll play some SOV when I'm knocked out. We'll see. True. Uh, true, this, true. This game is like that. Because now, after that, after the last part, I can play it with my eyes closed, probably. So that'll, that will help. So, uh, just, the agenda just for today. every benchmark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the agenda for today, uh, roughly speaking, we need to talk a lot about villagers because they're very interesting and very variable. And I know Pete has a lot of interesting uh, opinions on the, about them, uh, or the meta does. I don't know where they where one ends and the other stops. Uh, <laughs> then we have some. Uh, we need to talk about Alm at some points. Um, Python is going to be thrown in with the villagers at some point. It'll make sense when you see it. Uh, we're going to discuss the armor knights or the soldiers, Lucas and Forsyth, and how far apart they are. Yeah, so post-production mecha here, we ended up talking for a lot longer than I thought, so everything I said up to this point will be in today's video, and everything I'm about to say will be discussed in the next one. And we need to talk about, uh, I think, the, the mage uh, siblings, so Delthea and Luthier, and of course the, the cavalry. Uh, at some point we'll have a cavalry discussion, so that'll be Clive, Matilda, and Zeke, and I think that roughly sums up the Alm routes. So, yeah. Are yeah. we just getting into villagers now? So, uh, well, I'll just mention real quick that we moved Nome. Oh yeah. Um, Ooh, controversial. We right just away. didn't change. <laughs> we we just didn't change them from the original tier list, I believe, where they were both in E tier next to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I looked at them, I was like, okay, they're in E tier. That's a valid right. But uh, Jesse kills like a singular witch, while Noma actually chips a couple things in Doom the Tower. They're basically the same rating, but I would say Noma is slightly above. Yeah, so that's that's our only cheat from the Celica route. Other than that, I don't think we're touching that. Unless something weird comes up. We probably have to kind of compare some units to a Celica route uh, characters, actually, because they're in the same mm -hmm. tier as Alm routes. But other than that, we're going to focus on Alm routes. So, yep. villagers. Um, is this like a really big meta discussion? Because not only are we talking about four different units, uh, Grey, Tobin... Fey and uh, Cliff, but we're also talking about units that can go into like four or five different classes each. And I think everyone who's played Shadows of Valentia probably just likes whatever they did in the first playthrough and kind of sticks with that, with exceptions, of course. But generally, I feel like that's the online preference is just like I did this and it worked out, so it must be the best option or it must be a good option at the very least. So I want to get out of the way real quick. Uh, generally, when I mm -hmm. have like newcomers uh, play SOV and they like ask for villagers. I generally just recommend you go with three different options for your first playthrough and kind of just do whatever you enjoy. And it always works out because Shadows of Valencia isn't hard enough to warrant a very precise class path. Uh, that said, there are certain paths that are where you're trying to up the efficiency count, where you're trying to lower your turn count. Some of them come out better than others. And in that sense, there's going to be some, some weird takes in here. Uh, but I think primarily the, the first thing we could probably get out of the way is like how do you even go about deciding what a path should be for a character and maybe more importantly how do you factor that into a rating where you have to rate these characters as one entity even though they're really like four different units packed into one portrait you know how do you even where do you even start okay so uh the, the first thing to consider about villagers is that when you're looking at what you make one villager that's not something you that, that's not a decision you make in a vacuum right uh, you cannot just decide, today I will use three mercenaries because everyone's best class is mercenary, and therefore having three of them would be good. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you only get two swords, and one of them has two might. So that's not really something you can do. So you're already getting a little constrained there. The, the second thing that you have to consider is uh, your EXP management. Some classes require more EXP than others. Uh, that's something that's going to come in uh, into effect really hard with Grey. Um, and as for uh, how I personally rate them, I try to rate them based on their best class, 
Uh, but there are certain exceptions to that. If their best class would uh, deprive you from someone else's best class. Yeah. So to give a concrete example, Gray's best class in a vacuum is probably Merc. That's how he'll be the most impactful in your playthrough. But he's also the worst of the three Mercs, uh, which is kind of funny because it's his canon class, but eh. It's also a common choice for um, him. I think a lot of yeah, people do great because Merc. People, well, it's because he has good strength ish and then you look at his speed and it's really bad so it's you know it's the obvious choice it makes sense on a surface level um and, and you know i'm not gonna call someone out for making uh gray a merc uh, he actually even has uh, some advantages over uh cliff that i'll get into when we look at them as individual characters but uh, that's just one example and then with axt management uh let's say you you're bringing a mage the mage requires less exp than say an archer and an armor knight also requires less EXP than an archer uh, because the armor knight has, has faster EXP gain and the mage, uh, because the mages are, to be completely uh, frank, they're temporary humans, right? You train them as a mage and then you ditch them. Yeah. Uh, when they've. Because uh, if you want to promote them, you have to like, get to level 12, right? For like mage Grey and stuff, or mage Tobin. For basically no stat gain either. Yeah, it's. Uh, we had like really good magic units on Selica route, but the, on the on the Alma route, it just feels like such a slog to even use a mage for mm -hmm. long term, let alone promote them. Yeah, well, especially because the maps don't have a lot of terrain that uh, puts a check on cavaliers and bow knights, so your mages will fall behind really fast uh, when you're traversing the really big maps on Alm side that have very little terrain. Yeah. Okay, uh, so. That can I what, one more I one more quick generals. yeah what, one yeah. more quick meta notes uh, I when it comes to these kind of dilemmas where there's so many variables in what someone can become and you like in a vacuum the best class let's say it's mercenary and three units want it basically I think it's probably valid to treat it as some sort of resource that you can give to someone where mm -hmm. like sure you get an great gets an advantage out of becoming a mercenary but in turn some like Cliff becomes worse for not becoming a mercenary or if you do make him a mercenary, you have to deal with all the drawbacks of two mercenaries. So in that way, I think it's fair to think of uh, these villager promotions as a certain resource or like a stat booster, basically. And you discuss the merits of them. And then I like your approach of judging by their best class. You could also argue that you judge them by like how good they are in different classes, like you average them or like you weigh how useful it is that someone is in a, in a, like good in a class that is not highly demanded. But I think that's kind of like the realm where I usually that I usually use to decide um, how to judge units with such variable classes. That's kind of the way I go. But I'm fine with simplifying it to the like, we'll just judge them as their best class. I I would still uh, count it as a resource. Um, yeah. But um, I do think looking at their performance in all the classes is worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I'm not going to actually look at all of them because, for instance, Armor Knight's pretty easy to go over. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I think you should see it as a resource. You should judge by their best performance, but if that class is not available or is highly contested, uh, that should be a penalty. And again, in the case of Grey, Merc is like one of his only good classes. So yeah. that's a point against him in a way because he's less flexible than Tobin. Yes. Tobin is also good as a Merc, uh, despite his high base feed. Um, but if you can't make him a Merc, He's got other options. Gray, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of up shit creek if he doesn't have a uh, merc. Yeah, because do you want to just go over the villagers individually now and like talk about their options, or do you want to go for uh, classes? Yeah, yeah. So I guess, um, I guess I'll mention what the top compositions are, and then uh, based on those compositions, we can talk about the mages or okay. the villagers and how they fit into that. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, the most common one is going to be Merc, Archer, Mage. I don't like that one. Villager Archer is really bad. Uh, you don't get a, se a single bow until Southern Outpost. It's a steel bow, which weighs a, a ton. Uh, you don't have a lot of base feed on the class either, so it's not like you're going to double with the steel bow. No, you you're not using that. the steel bow. Yeah. If, you, if you're not using the steel bow, you do no damage. Also, the steel bow is inaccurate. And by the time you get the Iron Bow, Python is around anyways. So what have you accomplished by training a Villager Archer? 
not a whole lot, right? Yeah. So I don't, I don't like that comp. The answer to that question, I think, for most people would be you get two archers, two is better than one because the class is really good later on, right? That's yeah. what most people will say. But, um, but and, and we'll get into that for Cliff, but uh, these days you dread loop in efficient playthroughs, Ooh. so you'd get a second archer later anyways. That's right. And by dread loop, you mean you have a dread fighter, you love them to level 10, I believe, and then they can reclass to villager again yep. and become an archer. And as bad as it sounds, apparently it's uh, good. Yeah, that's right. Uh, part of it, admittedly, is because of the rule set that, like, as a community, we've come up for, like, efficient LTC runs. Um, and I say efficient LTC, this is also going to map onto casual runs really well, I'd like to mention. Because, um, the, the reason we have enough EXP to do it is because uh, you need to do every forest dungeon encounter. So in Dragon Shrine on Selka route, you need to fight the four Necro Dragons. On Alm route, where this is relevant, it's because in uh, Fear Shrine, there are two forest encounters that you can use to go from Villager to Sniper uh, before even seeing another map. And you can do that right after looping. So you're not going from... Uh, dread loop to villager and then taking a villager onto the next map you're taking a sniper onto the next map yeah that makes a lot of sense i mean i don't mind that rule per se especially not for this tier list mm -hmm. i don't even like i personally don't really well, care too much about the strict um like mm -hmm. the meta itself uh but the reason i like this for like this kind of tier list is because uh, i think it's applicable if you're to... casual you're doing it yeah like casually casual players will probably fight almost everything at least once anyway so it doesn't, it's not yeah. very far departed from what people usually do. So that's why I don't mind it for this tier list specifically. Mm -hmm. So so that's why like you're allowed to loop them. Or not allowed, because you know obviously there's no hard rule against it. But it th better. that's why you have enough EXP. It's because of those maps. Yeah. Uh, which are mandatory under our rule set that we use over there. But even if you're a casual player, I mean, you're going to do those maps. So you should have enough EXP to loop. Yeah, and then you uh, have anyways. yeah, and then you have a really good um, dude that has like the dread fighter bases, but also the bow knights class bonuses, the class advantages, yeah, and also like fifteen extra levels. <laughs> uh, so, uh, anyways, so next the the next comp you can do is uh, double mage, and that's really good because there's a lot of soldiers early game, and they have really high res, but really low defense, or sorry, really low res and really high defense. Uh, so you can get around them by using Double Mage. The other advantage is that Double Mage doesn't require a lot of EXP, so you can funnel more EXP into the rest of your units because you're not training an archer all the way to Bow Knight. Yeah, and like you said, you, you're ditching both of those mages then later on, right? You're only using them to sell kills for otters, basically. Sort, uh, sort of. If they turn out well, you can use them long-term if you want, but uh, like um, most of the time you're going to ditch them around the time of uh, the Safe Fortress. Okay, which means you're really only just using one villager. Well, two if you count Fey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, side note, uh, when I say double mage, you can use uh, Mage Fey as one of your mages uh, if you're willing to go without Freeze Fey. Uh, and then you can make Tobin like an armor knight or something if you want. You can even go triple mage if you want. Max XP. Um, okay, so yeah. that's, the, that's the double mage setup uh, then? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, apart from that, uh, yeah, you can go Mage, Armor Knight, um, Merc. I don't like that one that much, mostly because Foresight exists, and Foresight is pretty good, as we'll get into later. Mm -hmm. uh, it also robs you of one of your early mages. So if you ask me, the best meta is two mages, one Merc, and then Priest for Fey. Okay. Now, I, I guess with all of that groundwork laid out, we can finally actually talk about units. Yes. Okay, Faye, her classes. Cavalier, don't do it. Don't do not do any Cavalier Villager. It's not that they're bad, it's that they're Clive that you need to train. Why would you train a Villager Cav when Clive exists? Yeah, and again, that requires the XP that you could have just not invested to get a Cavalier to begin with. And then, like, Clive is good, but you don't really need two Clives. Yeah, well, you can't have two Clives, because a lot of the reason he's good is the Rider's Bane, and you only have one of those. Yeah, true. It's kind of the same thing as the killer bow, for example. You only have one killer bow for a lot of the time. Yeah. So you're only only guy gets nervous. It's almost like the same dilemma as the whole mercenary thing, come to think of it, where it's like, okay, we only have so many good swords. And we, if the yeah. more the, you know, guys we have the same class, the worse it gets. So class by class, actually not a pitfall in this case. Not in this case. 
Uh, except with mages. Yeah, the more uh, mages the better. Then again, mage rings. Uh, anyways, uh, next class, Pegasus Knight, also don't do it. I did you don't have any good spheres or com- <laughs> Yeah, and you fucking hated it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but yeah, I would not recommend it. <laughs> it's also like, um, like, you have, again, you have Claire too, and I don't know if there's enough yeah. facility for two flyers. There probably- uh, There isn't. Yeah. Uh, also, you don't really have good lances early game. You get like an iron lance. Who cares? The co <laughs> combat's not good, right? Uh, then as a mage, so the really nice thing, female mage has seven speed. Ooh. Uh, and then, so and then fire weighs a bit, but you still ooh. double some things, I assume. Yeah, uh, it, it weighs three. You can double most things, but more importantly, you speed tie soldiers, so you're not getting doubled by them. Uh, you can use the letter shield, which makes you super bulky. You take like no damage from them, especially because Fey has a really high defense growth. Um, and then if you gain even one point of speed, you'll start doubling the four speed soldiers, which is most of them. Um, and then, you know, long term, uh, like she gets Seraphim. So does Priest, so it's not an advantage of Mage over Priest, but it is something she can do if you're using her long term as a Mage. Uh, since she's going to be able to Seraphim Fiends in Act 5. Um, she's pretty accurate. Um, yeah, she's pretty good as a mage. Now, uh, I think the utility that most of us are interested in, though, is Priest, because there is no competition for it. She can, uh, she can heal Silk, which is less of a big deal than it sounds like in casual runs, because you can just eat from the convoy to heal yourself and then just warp again. But... In more efficient runs, if you need a a, uh, a third warp, then it would take you an extra turn to do it if you didn't have uh, priest uh, silk, uh, or sorry, priest uh, fey. Well, and you can warp then, on turn two, right? If you heal silk right away. Um, I believe. How much HP does silk have? Warp costs seven, I want to say. Yeah. So if she uses, I'm pretty it. sure you can do two in a row. Yeah. Because recovery yeah, heals like. Yeah, costs eight, and she has eighteen. So she can already two. She can already do two in a row. It's only the third oh, okay, one that's relevant. Okay, okay, fair. Okay. Yeah, I was pretty sure she could, but I just looked it up just to make sure. Yeah. Gotcha. Um. Yeah. And then, uh, physic is uh really useful, especially in in casual runs. Uh, if you fight a map spawn on the safe fort, um, it's actually almost impossible to save Matilda if you don't have physic. Uh, speaking from experience, from my zero percent growth run. <laughs> Uh, uh, because some, the archers in the mass fawn have iron bows and do like five damage instead of two. Oh, uh, it's so Matilda dies a lot faster. You can physic green units in this game, right? Or like, you yes. can physic Matilda. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that that's really useful. Physic in general is less useful than you'd think, uh, despite the example I just gave. Because the thing is, for most maps, if you match the right enemy to the right you know, unit, you're not going to take that much damage in the first place. So, Physic doesn't actually send you that far. The other thing is that Physic doesn't heal a lot, so at most you take an extra hit, and that can make or break some close situations, but it's not as big of a deal as, like, Physic in, I don't know, IF-10 or something. Yeah, or it's even, nice. Like, I mean, we agreed it was a really big deal on Seleka route, Physic on Jenny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's because uh, your main uh, juggernaut is Leon, who has really garbage res, and you're fighting a lot of mages. But, like, Clive versus Cavaliers takes, like, two damage, by comparison. Yeah. So, uh, it's a lot more feasible to have a unit just fight everything they need to fight without getting healed in between. Yeah, that seems fair to me. So, basically, Physic isn't as good. I... I... I've played with Physic a lot, and I really enjoy the luxury of it, but I can totally see how it's not nearly as good as it is, for example, on Seleka Road. So I agree with that. Well, uh, for instance, in the Soyo that uh, we did, uh, you gave me, or, well, Modi gave me uh, Mage Fae. I, I didn't miss Physic at all outside of Nui Baba, uh, where it is admittedly really good. Yeah, I think when you, people think um, of Nui Baba and Fae, they might think of like Rescue as like a very viable option to have. Yeah. So, uh, it's because the strat in a fast clear is that you warp in your Dreadfighter, preferably Cliff, and just have him bonk Nui Baba turn one. Uh, but he's going to be facing a lot of attacks, so you're going to need to physic him turn two. 
Yeah, I think um, it, the, the old. Admittedly, cheese, that's a. Go ahead. Uh, uh, admittedly, that's a more specific strat, and I would say Fey is still really good on this map if you're not doing that, because uh, as you were about to mention, I assume the old cheese is warp rescue, yeah, yeah. where you warp in, uh, you warp in like Alm or something, hunters volley, and then rescue them out. Yeah. Um, and that's only one place where rescue is good. It's also really good on Regal Falls to boost units up the stairs, just get them up there faster. For instance, like uh, you can do like the FE4 style rescue cheese where you warp uh, Fae forward and then you walk forward and rescue Silk so that they both get a boost in movement. Uh, you can do rescue in Last Bastion to rescue your Bell Knight from one lane to the next to uh, clear them out faster. Uh, you can do rescue. Um, fun fact, you can actually change visit or deployment position on the final map. So what you can do is you can spawn Fey on the right side to rescue on towards uh, Duma <laughs> if you're uh, trying to clear it fast. Ah, uh, yes, that works. I never do that because I, I'm, I'm a pure... <laughs> I'm a purist. I keep all of Alm's people on the left, but there's no reason to do that gameplay-wise. Yeah. So, like, I would say Fey is really good for all of those reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, um, would I say, where would I say that is in A tier? Uh, I don't know if I'd say it makes her the best villager, but I, I'd i say that she's either just below the uh, Salica mages, or just above uh, well, mages plus saber, or just above them. Um, mostly because she's useful throughout the entire game. There is at the very least a chunk of the game where the mages or Saber are less useful. Like, Saber is less useful on Act 2, the mages are less useful on in early Act 4. Uh, but Fey is always useful, and some of her contributions are major, especially if we're keeping in mind turns with Rescue. Yeah, I think I'll agree with that. We'll... This is sounding correct to me, so I'll just move her above him for now. I don't, I don't hate it. I personally, I'm really used to like relying on physic on Faye, so it's hard for me to see her in it, like entire different context. But I can see the applications. I just never performed them, so I'm okay with them with her above yeah. them for consistent utility That's over fair. the course of the entire game. So okay, uh, we laid the groundwork for the rest, but where do we go? Where did they go? Um, I guess uh, actually not Cliff. Uh, let's let's do Tobin. So Tobin. As I was alluding to, uh, I would personally put him above uh, Faye. Uh, Ooh, now, damn. what are his classes, and why is he so good? So as a merc, he's okay, but that's not notable. Everyone's okay as a merc, and he's not the best merc still. Mm -hmm. Better and great because he has better res, though. Isn't, um, um, like, we'll probably come this come later, but look, why do mercs need res? Because as far as I'm aware, Dreadfighter already has, like, insane mage killing potential, no matter, no matter what. Uh, it can always be more insane. If you're fighting a lot of mages on enemy phase, uh, the big one is Nui Baba, uh, then you're facing like six, seven magic attacks in a single turn and an extra damage, like an extra damage reduced uh, because he, he has two more res, but when you account for Apotrope, that's minus one damage instead of minus two. Uh, minus one damage over seven enemies is still seven damage. Like, that's pretty major. Oh, so it adds up over the course of multiple attacks. Okay, I'm fair with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, uh, so uh, uh, as I was saying, he's not really notable in that class. It's just he can do it okay if you want him to. Uh, I guess he has the best skill growth if you're like a bit of a memer and you want to use Tiger Stance. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> would not recommend in an efficient context, though, so that's not really coming into account. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not very good. Um, now, uh, as a Cavalier, same as Faye. Don't use Cav Tobin. <laughs> He's just Clive but worse. Um, <laughs> now, uh, the interesting... Oh, and uh, Archer, as I said, Villager Archer bad. Uh, he'll do okay, because Archer is okay. But he's going to have a bad early game. Just don't, don't do it if you're trying to be efficient. Mm -hmm. Now, the really sick classes. So, uh, the first one I'll mention is Armor Knight. Now, I don't think it's his best class, and if you do want to use an Armor Knight, I would recommend Foresight over him. But <laughs> Who right Armor now is chilling in D tier, so we'll get to that at some point. Yes, <laughs> eventually. But Tobin, 
as an armor knight is sick and i feel like armor knights get like a bad re uh, oh sorry you were asking about villager res earlier for for mercs and i wanted to bring up arcane as far as but i forgot to because got sidetracked <laughs> um before you're a dread you do arcane as far as and your mercenary is the best best or second best unit there uh, because they exactly two round with the lightning sword so plus two res is effectively minus four damage per arcanist yeah. Which is extremely significant. Anyways, Armor Knight. So, soldier bases are not very good. They're okay, but they're not very good. And you might need to spend a, spend a couple turns like fighting encounters in T-Shrine to get him to Armor Knight by the end of Act 1. But when he gets to Armor Knight, Armor Knight bases are insane. 16 attack and 12 defense, you take like no damage and you kill everything, right? Um... And why that's so good, specifically for Tobin, is because his, his base speed is insane. It's 6. Now, saying 6 feet is insane might sound insane in itself, right? Yeah, but you only but need one more But this is what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. There, there's that, but also enemies are slow as, slow as hell on all route. 8 speed is the magic threshold that you want to hit to double every relevant enemy on all route for an armor knight. Um, and, uh, fun fact, despite Tobin having, like, 10 or 15 speed growth as an Armor Knight, he, had, he will hit that on average with no boosters by the time he's a Baron. Uh, so, Armor Knight Tobin is basically... Well, I, I just said he needed to grow speed twice, but if you give him the speed shrines, uh, to at 8 speed... If you give him the speed trains, he's basically a 0% growth unit. He coasts off of his bases the entire game. That's so weird. Now, yeah. Now, here's the fun... Oh, uh, also, this part's not efficient because it requires too much investment, but I want to bring it up because it's really funny. So, Zofia Gate Calves are, like, one of the most hated enemies in the entire game. They don't die in one round to the Lightning Sword. Clive doesn't kill them either because they have too much defense. Uh, if you give all three attack shrines and all three speed shrines to, to Knight Tobin, he one rounds them <laughs> as a level one knight. And there's a. I'm going to get even more specific. If you go, I believe, uh, two tiles down and two tiles left of the gate, um, they will attack you from a grass tile instead of a tile tile, so oh, they don't get the avoid. Goddamn floor tiles. Oh, that's funny. I never realized that. Yeah, the, Ooh, the, that's funny. The reason is because the they can only attack you from the right and from above. Above is a grass tile, so the first one attacks you from the right, and then everyone else attacks you from the grass. But is does the grass also give a void, or is it like plain grass? It's zero. Okay, it's a nice. zero. Ah, oh, that's so nice. Now, this is inefficient because you're giving them way too many boosters, but it is funny, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I thought I should mention it. Uh, for everyone who hates yeah. that map. Yeah, but the peak performance okay. for him would be like just uh, Knight and Baron base uh, being really good in general for like yeah. 3 especially. Yeah, and so here's some concrete examples. Uh, fun fact, Armor Knights are good against mages. Yeah, the, the uh, in Arcanist, Arcanist, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in, in Arcanist Forest, if Tobin gets hit by the Arcanist on enemy phase, the Arcanist will go from 30 to 29 HP. And then Tobin doubles for 14. That's one HP short, until you remember the Arcanus uh, will lose one more HP on player phase when he counters. So, if he gets hit on enemy phase, Tobin will then one round the Arcanist that chipped itself for one HP. Mm. Uh, and how many rounds does it take to kill a base Armor Knight Tobin? Well, it takes five rounds. What the hell? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Hold up. That doesn't sound like an Armor Knight uh, thing. I thought that. I mean, that, my memories from the Arcanist Force is that it's really scary and the enemies hit you really hard. Um, he takes 8 and has 34 base HP. Okay, that's kind of sick. Is it Knight? What the hell? Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. Let's yep. go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so, a Force. or not Force, like, Tobin. Kind of sick against the Arcanist as a Knight. Uh, what else is he good at? Well, he trivializes 3 3, which isn't like a very hard map or anything. But if, if you want to use, like, Clive as your Rider's main user, like, sometimes his defense is a little low, you might need to dodge something. 
Uh, Telvin doesn't need to dodge anything. He gets tanked for like one damage by Fernand. Oh, it's the Fernand recoup map. I was about to ask which one it was. Yes. Okay, yeah, fair enough. So you just plop him somewhere where the calves will like hit him. It doesn't even matter actually if they survive. They're probably not going to survive because he's Rider's Bane. So they just die, right? Yep. Uh, well, no, they, they will survive because it's Sunforge at that point. Oh, yeah. And he's not going to die. Um, yeah. And then outside of those, in, you know, the first map of Act 3, he's going to do really well. And this is like general Armor Knight stuff, so this also applies to Farsight and Lucas. So maybe we can, like, buy a track from the villagers to place them after. Because everything I'm saying currently applies to them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're using the same class bases. Yeah. That's um, a wee moment. Yeah. Um, so, in the first map of Act 3, he takes actually no damage from the soldiers and barely any damage from the armor knights. I mean, he takes one, right? Uh, because Sophia has a one minimum. Yeah, yeah. As, no damage as he takes, like, basically nothing. Yeah. He, he gets tanked. I think it even sounds and like And he tank. does... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you play a blocking animation if you take one damage. Yeah. Um... And you do a ton of damage in return. Uh, I didn't run the mats on this one. Uh, like, I'm mostly speaking from experience, since I do Armor Knight almost every run these days. Um, but he, he, like, two rounds them, or it really sets them up for someone else to kill them. Like, he's really sick. And then on, on uh, the safe fort, um, I forgot how much you need to forge it, but uh, in one of Karma's runs, she visited the village where you can forge the Steel Lance before doing the safe fort. And uh, ma actually managed to one round the Armor Knights inside the fort with Armor Knight Tobin. That's so stupid. I've never done Armor Knights. Yeah. I gotta say, I don't have much experience with this. I do have our experience with um, Foresight doing almost the exact same things, though. So I can definitely verify that yeah. the bases are good enough at the very least. Yeah. And then he hits Baron, right? And as a Baron, he has like 18 defense and 22 attack. And. Uh, like, that's really good, like, on its own, with no context, but when you give it context, it's even more insane. Um, so, the common wisdom is that to kill an Armor Knight, you double them with Excalibur and you hope for a hit and a crit, right? Yeah. So that's player phase, but then on enemy phase, if you don't crit, you probably get doubled while you're holding fire. Oh, yeah. By the Armor Knight, because the, the Armor Knight has 7 speed. Um, and then, you know... Fire also does less damage, so you're not even 4-hit KOing. And the thing is, Armor Knights have the same move as Mage in this game. It, really, the only disadvantage is the range. So, in Act 4, your Armor Knight is effectively an enemy phase Mage, if you want to think about it that way. You throw him at an Armor Knight, and, uh, fun fact, with a, uh, I believe, either Cap or plus 3 Steel Forge, I'd need to check the exact one. I don't think it needs to be maxed out, but it does need to be like plus three, plus four around there. Uh, you will two round armor knights on enemy phase. So you just throw you Tobin at armor knights. Yeah, but you don't die like a mage would. Cool. Yeah. You can also do the same to barons because enemy barons will often have lowered in class bases for defense. Not bad. Uh, it, in fact, <laughs> the... So the, the number is uh, 33 attack, now I think about it. So 33 attack is a max steal. Uh, that will one round almost every Baron in the game. Or two rounds, sorry. Um, and 8 speed will double every single Baron in the game. <laughs> all this sounds very and stupid. And all this, it is. All this for fucking Tobin as an Armour Knight. Not even his best class. Yeah. And um, also... Again, you'd think they're weak against mages. I, also, I already showed Arcanus for us, but uh, Tempest Lance is plus 10 might, and Armor Crusher is it's still plus 5. So if you see like a witch or something, you can just bonk them before they counter you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just don't die in counterattack, but it sounds like he doesn't die to the counterattack, so that's fine. I just had like some experiences where wouldn't. I think it was Valbar who could like Tempest Lance uh, a Cantor and Sadaka route. But if I did, he the would die. The one I the bribed you attack. for. Yeah, the one you bribed me for. Exactly that one. I was like, wait, if I do that, yep. he might die. Let's not do that. But Tobin is different. Okay. Tobin is built different. So, which, um, I guess part of the reason I'm emphasizing Armor Knight Tobin so much, one, it's a good way to segue into Foresight and Lucas, since it's more Armor Knights in general, and Tobin's just one of the characters that can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, two, it means that he has more than one viable class. 
So if you want to use Tobin and you also want to use Mage Fey, you can do it because he's still going to be good as an Armor Knight. So you can do like double Mage plus Armor Knight Tobin plus Merc Cliff, for instance. And I think that versatility, you yeah. know, should count for something. Yeah. <laughs> this is Niven's final form. So do you think Armor Knight <laughs> Tobin is better than uh, Mage Tobin? Because Mage... um, it's better long term. It's worse short term. Ah, okay. That's that's a fair assessment. Because I think most people would do uh, Mage Tobin. Like that's what he's known for. Yeah, and Excalibur that block. is what I think you should do. Partially because Foresight exists. Uh, what I mean by this is, even if you want to use an Armor Knight, you should just use Mage Tobin, ditch Mage Tobin, and use Foresight when he joins. Yeah, especially because Tobin gets Excalibur so early on that like you don't have to invest so heavily to get the best spell, and you just ditch him afterwards when he's no longer useful. Yeah, um... So, I guess speaking of, yeah, Mage Tobin is his best class. So, as I mentioned as an Armor Knight, you give him plus two speed. You do that as a as a mage, too. And the reason you do that is because with eight speed, uh, minus three for uh, fire, uh, you will double the four speed soldiers and match the five speed soldiers in attack speed. And that is insanely good, because at base, he has 11 damage with... Um, with fire. Yeah. Um, that, that he's also going to have... That Sorry? almost kills him, right? No. Uh, they have like 30 HP. Yeah, oh, okay. 27. Um, but... Uh, anyway, almost, I mean, it sets him up for someone else, is what I meant. Yeah. Uh, but it's not really within range for him to, like, eventually reach one or one rounding no. with attack procs like his growth's not that good yeah but like that's um, okay because he's not a long-term unit anyway so yeah you... and in fact you could even argue it's a good thing mm -hmm. yeah exactly uh next um also mage has five defense at base i believe so with the letter shield he has eight defense and takes three damage from a soldier he has 28 hp and he has uh he takes one damage from the um, fire. from fire, so he's taking four damage per round, and he gets um, so that that would be seven rounded by soldiers, <laughs> uh, while he chips them all within that range. Now, Mecca, how many soldiers are there on Solder Not Post? Yes, I think that uh, I... there are five of them. It's not as much as I thought there would be. I think it's like, is it five soldiers and then like an archer? Like two archers, maybe? That's what I remember. Uh, it's five soldiers, one archer, and the boss. That's also a soldier, I think, but it's like higher stats, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, at the very least, if the spreadsheet is to be believed, it's five. For some reason, when I see that number, I'm like, that's not right. But I mean, the exact number doesn't really matter that much, well, right? It's just about like yeah, soldiers e are common. Yeah, either way. The... Well, what I was more getting at is uh, he can get hit by literally all of them, oh. live, and leave them <laughs> in low HP. Like, that's how insane Mage Tobin is. I see. So, I think you were saying he's better than uh, Faden for being good as a mage and then good as an armor knight. Yeah. And then also, he can be a merc, but it's whatever. Yeah, and like, the thing is, early game is like the hardest part for playing fast because you have so little options. You don't have physic, you don't have forges. Like, being able to do 22 damage is insane. Your Merc, at this point, is probably doing, like, 3 damage to them, because you don't have Lightning Sword yet. Oh, that's right. You only get that after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not to mention that he's going to be good as a mage on, you know, the map beforehand. So it's, like, it's really good. Yeah, he can kill a Letter Shield Merc as well. Yeah. Although I usually leave that to my second mage. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> But I mean, Tobin is so good that I don't really want to waste him on a single enemy. <laughs> yeah. I want to move him forward. Suffering from success, can't fight the strongest enemy because I'm already fighting every other enemy on the map. <laughs> yeah, because what I usually do on that map is I, I mountain walk the, the bad mage. Oh, um, yeah. And, and then I send Tobin right with everyone else. Because that way I can meet the, the letter shield merc halfway. That's fair. So, yeah. yeah, and also, as you mentioned, he gets Excalibur really early. That's really good, because with that he has 7 AS, uh, maybe 9, depending on if he gained like a speed proc, um, which doubles a lot of things. And while I would still say that Armor Knight 
Thoban is better uh, long term. It's that's still enough to maybe kill an enemy in like Act Four. Yeah, like you said, it has also, some utility and like armor nice yeah. from the safe fort if you want to. Yeah. So I'd put him like above Faye personally. All right. We'll just drag him over there for now. People have an issue with yeah. it, you know, they can comment and I'll maybe ignore him. <laughs> I got him. True. True. All right. Uh, I guess by that same token, we can talk about the Armor Knights. Uh, since yeah, sure. I know we were talking about villagers, but we went over all the class bases. Let's not do it twice. Yeah, I agree. We just move Forsyth and Lucas to where they need to be. Because I think yeah. you're saying they should be closer together in some capacity. Because you like Forsyth a lot more than D tier yeah. and Lucas a lot less than A minus. I don't know about yeah, a lot, uh, I would put Foresight in B minus personally. B minus, all right, that's lower than expected. Yeah, but we'll take it. Does he? Well, you gotta, you have to be realistic. He joins before Zofia Gate. You want him to be promoted for Zofia Gate. That means he has basically mandatory grinding to use them as efficiently as possible, because it's actually more efficient to grind them mm -hmm. than to lug him around on promoted uh, turn wise. Yeah, uh, assuming you're planning to use them anyways. So. You have a built-in penalty with that. I, I, I love the guy. I love using him. But I can't just not penalize having a low base join level. Yeah, it's like what? Level 3 soldier? Level 6 soldier? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then even then when he's trained, he's not your best unit in... I want to say any map. Like, there's some units... There's some maps where he's really good. But he's still not as good as, like, the, the top dogs, right? That are insane like even if he's really good he's still not the best in any map so i would say that doesn't warrant being an a because if you look at everyone that's an a right now except the people we haven't moved like they will be your best unit in some map at some point i'm fine with that i did like him a lot but i gave him a lot of favoritism so i don't have a great scope of how a more realistic mm -hmm. uh, force performs other than the class based performances that you just named because what you said for tobin sounded really good but i'm assuming tobin He's an A+, plus, not just because he has that potential as an armor knight, but also the mage class. Which it's is more because of his mage. Yeah. Yeah. So mage is good. The, yeah. the thing is, um, the thing about Foresight, too, is like he's basically going to perform the same as armor knight Tobin. Because while he has a lower uh, speed base, he has a higher speed growth. So on average, they will both reach 8, eight speed naturally. And if they don't, you can just give them the booster. Yeah. So B minus, but sounds like you want him above Kamui uh, still, because with Kamui uh, it sounds yeah, more mediocre pers personally, than yeah. what Forsyth yeah. offers. Like Forsyth is still good. Kamui was like, I mean, the Kamui class is, is like, man, far removed Kamui from Saber. Kamui is like the, he's like the most like reluctant B minus. Yeah. <laughs> In my heart, oh, he was the he was the he's only below one below Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> like, in my heart, he's below Jesse, because he is so pointless. But in practice, like, if you do decide to use him for whatever reason, he's still going to be good. Yeah. It's just, he's in the shadow of what could have been, I guess. That's like, that hurts the most. I feel like if Saber wasn't there, Kamui might be a bit higher just because... Well, I guess Dean still exists, so I don't know if that holds up. If they both didn't exist, then maybe it'd be something else. Yeah. Class by class. Not um, a pitfall, apparently. Not a pitfall in this game. Okay, that's uh, the Armor so, Knights, I think? Uh, well, Lucas. Oh, yeah, the other Armor Knights. Yeah, sorry. I forgot what Lucas was. Um, I'd put him below Foresight. I don't know if that's also below or below um, Kamui. Uh, the issue with Lucas is that uh, his speed is really bad. He's not going to need grinding like Foresight would because it's very reasonable for him to promote... Uh, by, uh, you know, Zofia Gate. And that's, like, definitely an advantage. And as a temporary unit, he will, like, put in some work when you have no one else. So you also have to consider that. So I can't put him too far below, because he does have those advantages. But in terms of a long-term unit, the fact that he, his feed is so bad is actually a, a major disadvantage, because feed is pretty contested. Like, um... Or rather, it's contested early. Like, uh, Mage Tobin will always want those two speed boosters. Clive wants one as well. And then after that, the next one you get is like after Fear Mountain, which 
Again, a couple of those are earma earmarked for your Cavalier for Act 4. So, um, I, I should specify, in the case where you're using Armor Knight Tobin, the, the speed that you'd give him is fine, because they would normally go to Mage Tobin, and he's not there anymore. Hmm. But in the case of using Farsight, or Lucas, they do have to compete with Mage Tobin. You know, Tobin doesn't have to compete with himself. Yeah. Well, sort of. Um, you know, in, not in a way that hurts him any more than that already. Yeah. Know, he's already competing. And then I think, just to emphasize this, um, the other units, they need a bit of speed, but they can also just have, like, good long-term prospects speed-wise, whereas Lucas needs those speeds to get to the minimum speed required to do, like, yeah, important stuff. Yeah, he averages, he averages six feet as a, like, 10-1 Baron. Well, as a Baron, which, oh, God, that's so low. Like, that's... Yeah, that's too below what you want. Okay. Meanwhile, Foresight, if you do, you know, the the same thing, will average, I believe, either 8 or 9. Um, yeah, he averages 8, almost 9. And also, Foresight has better res, which is relevant because part of the Armor Knight's fun performance is an Arcanus Forest. Um, and Lucas is just worse there. So I would put him below Foresight. Or I personally put him above Kamui. He's mm -hmm. not as good. I think if you want to use one long term, Foresight's better. But Lucas still is uh, lower investment in terms of EXP if you're just using him temporarily. Yeah. And um, he just helps you when you have no one else, in it, which is definitely worth something as well. Yeah, I feel like it's fair to make a, uh, a parallel to like FE7 Osman, for example, who is like really good short term and really bulky when the rest of your team is not as bulky. Uh, but as better options appear and your player durability generally goes up, uh, the demand for Oswin slows down and he's just not as good anymore. Especially in the case of Oswin, the main problem is movement. I think in the case of Lucas, it's the problem is more with speed. Uh, Oswin generally doubles FE7 enemies yeah. after promotion. But uh, it's, four I, movement sounds like it would be a problem, but the thing is, like, in a fair amount of maps, you can just sort of slowly walk towards the enemy while your warper is you know, dealing with other units, and you'll still get there in time to see some action. Yeah, and I feel like the move disparity between other units is also not as big, because with some exceptions, the most mobile units in Alm are not the best offensive ones. Like, Claire is not going to be killing enemies, and um, I guess it, there's Clive, and at some point, like, Zeke and Matilda, uh, who can, like, run ahead, but most people will have similar movements well, to the Armor Knights, I feel like. Dread well, Dreadfighter's going to have seven, yeah, Dread and Alm does have five. True. And then the Bow Knight and Sniper is at 5 and 8, respectively. Okay, that's... Okay, fine. Maybe that's not a big point then. Yeah. There's like some points in the game where I feel like their movements are closer together than they are in some other yeah. games, but you're right, there are a lot Definitely, of exceptions especially too. in Act 1. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, oh. I guess we can get back to our villagers. Yeah, we're almost um, done with them. We only have Grey left, I believe. Yeah. So uh, Cliff. Oh, right. <laughs> Cliff, right. Cliff, Cliff. <laughs> Ah, I, I tried, I tried. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cl Cliff would go top of S tier for me, and for the record, I would put Leon above Silk. Um, oh, right. I think we did that last time too. I don't know what happened there. I think that was. I think we agreed on that actually. Oh, actually, we didn't right, yet because we didn't really talk about Silk yet. Okay. But that's that's fair. Yeah, true. Uh, I guess we'll go into why when we get to Silk eventually, but for now, I'd put Cliff on top. Mm. Why? Well, oh. uh, he has 8 res in a game where no one has res. Uh, this is six more res than Grey. This means that on Arcanus Forest, if he fights two Arcanus, or even one Arcanus over two rounds, because that's how many rounds it takes to kill with Lightning Sword, you have taken 12 less damage than Grey. <laughs> P.O.P. And a Lightning Sword does like, enough yeah. damage to where it sets up the kill for someone else, right? That's the idea. Because you At least you counter uh, them. It does 15. Yeah, that's, that's decent enough. It's like set might, right? Yeah. It doesn't take into account strength. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's good. Especially because, like, what else do you have? Uh, Python? Like, who else is going to counter these uh, guys? The, the best units are, like, an ar the best units are, like, an Armor Knight, uh, Python, and, uh, you know, your Merc for that map. Yeah. But other than the Merc, no one's really surviving well and dealing damage back, as far as I recall. Like, I think yeah. it feels well, like it's the best combination with, of both. With the Armor Knight, he's not really doing damage back in a way that will set up a kill for someone else um but for himself uh right. he is setting up a kill for himself yeah on assuming he's only baiting one yeah 
Um, like and also, know. Python actually counters for more. True. Uh, because Sniper Base is 12, Iron Bow is, I want to say, 2. Is it 2 or 4? Let's say it's 2. That's 14. Um, and then you're hitting on red. That can't be right. Hang on. Uh, 15. Iron I mean, it's not bow. a super important detail. That's the point. Is yeah, that's true. If he hits for like similar damage, that's already pretty good. Yeah, um, he hits for similar damage, mm -hmm. and also you can avoid a counter if he uh, if he's attacking on player phase. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so th those those would be the best units for that map. Yeah, so we have uh, Merc, uh, probably Myrmidon by that point. Cliff doing pretty well in uh, Arcanist Force because I think mm -hmm. you go Myrmidon by like one E, like Sophia's Gate, and then you keep uh, going, and then at some point you Dreadfighter and you loop to Villager. Uh, Bow Knight, like disgusting. Then you have a disgustingly powerful unit with one five range and a couple leave. That's the idea. No, we've we've never talked about a, a unit like that before. You know that doesn't remind me of anyone on the list right now. <laughs> well, Cliff is something <laughs> uh, else. Joke. Yeah. Well, so yeah. So, so joking aside, basically he's the best unit the moment you get the lightning sword because he will actually one round a lot of enemies with it in Act One. Uh, even if he doesn't one round, he's either setting up a kill for himself or someone else. Uh, he's pretty fast, so he will double basically everything. Like, Cliff has the highest speed growth, uh, I want to say in the entire game, but even if it's not in the entire game, he definitely has the highest speed growth out of the, the mercs. Um, and then, uh, the thing is, um, if you loop him, um, with the Duma Lance and the Hexlock Shield fight, he's gonna be a sniper which lets him completely decimate parts of Regal Falls and maybe even promote uh, off of Regal Falls plus the Zeke map to Bonite. And then you have a Dreadloop Bonite for Last Bastion, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, people uh, have since die. you've gotten the bases. Yeah, like, Bonite's Cliff, you literally throw in a lane, he kills everything, you rescue him, and you throw him in a Lex lane for him to kill everything there, too. Sounds disgusting. It's actually insane. It is disgusting. Mm -hmm. You should do it one day. I My next playthrough <laughs> is going to be involving that particular maneuver, for sure. Um, I, do think it's, I do think it's fair to question, right? So, we're putting him in S tier for taking a route that is generally really good. Uh, but that technically can also be taken by the other villagers. Not mm -hmm. Faye, because, you know, females cannot be mercenaries. Uh, or, like, you're proposing we put him here for doing something that these guys can do as well. Do you think that's fair? The thing, they can't do it as well. Um, they don't have as good speed, which makes them worse at doubling certain enemies, namely the enemy dreads in Nui Baba and uh, 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 SOV Saizo. Uh, because, fun fact, that guy was called Saizo in Gaida. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, <laughs> Um, he's also got much better res, which, as I said, 3-2 is... Personally, I think it's a pretty easy map, or maybe not easy, but, like, it's a fun map, What's right? I really again? enjoy uh, Arcanus Forest. Okay, yeah. Um, but, like, personally, you seem to be kind of scared of that map, and I don't know about you, but if I had a unit that could one or two round uh, and counter on enemy phase and took 12 less damage than the alternative option over the course of killing one guy when they have like 30 HP, I would say that is incredibly significant. Mm -hmm. Would you say that these kinds of gaps of performance, like Arcanist Forest and uh, the other maps where he outperforms like doubling Saizo, do you think that's a trend in like all of SOV or is it like a couple specific maps where he really stands out? In those specific maps, he stands out especially. On other maps, he will stand out in other ways or maybe slightly less or even be worse in some cases. Uh, like on the on the map where there's like 20 calves, he's slightly worse than Gray, because Gray's gonna be able to get a, away with a weaker forge to do the same thing than, that Cliff does, since Gray has higher strength. Mm -hmm. But for the vast majority of maps, uh, the higher speed is nice. Uh, for one, it makes it more dodgy, which dodge tanking is never 100% reliable, but if you're on terrain, you can get really low hit rates. And since it's one RN, right? Uh, yeah. You really want to get that as low as possible. Yeah, for low hit rates, it's uh, uh, it's one RN. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one RN below fifty. Which for anyone who doesn't know, one RN means that it rolls a single dice instead of averaging the result of two dice roll. Yeah. So basically, uh, the hit rate below fifty is true, 
as opposed to being less likely than this blade. So because low hit rates are really likely to hit compared to another game, uh, having the extra speed really helps. Mm -hmm. um, and um, especially when you get out of Dreadfighter, the gap in resistance will show itself even more again because he's going to be at 8 res compared to 2 res and take 6 less damage. Yeah. Uh, examples of where that matters, uh, Regal Falls. Um, it's also going to matter for Last Bastion because there's Meyer Arcanist there. It, it's going to matter for uh, the Burkut map. There's like 3 Arcanists on the left. Um, it's not really going to matter for Duma, but... You know, like, that's already a plenty of maps, right? Yeah, and I also feel like... Um, a unit like Cliff that's doing this much work, uh, basically like we already alluded to earlier, uh, a gap in certain stats, especially Avoid and Res, for a unit that is doing so much work, is just more impactful because it's going to be, the more he can take on, the more enemies are just deleted on sight, basically. So it, it really, yeah. like the defense can be transferred into offense, can be converted into offense so easily that it's like super worth. So, you know, it's a satisfy, satisfying explanation to me at least. Yeah. Now, uh, I want to touch on his other classes real quick, because I know some of the Ultron classes are popular, and that's part of the reason why mm. people would uh, oh, no. I know not make coming. him I know what's coming, I know what's coming, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll save it for last. Okay. <laughs> um, Armor Knight, uh, he's gonna do fine, I guess. The problem is that he has, like, two base speed, so he's got a speed hole to dig himself out of, but by the time he's a Baron, he'll be fine, I guess, if you want your growth unit. Uh, but at that point, you might as well just use Tobin or Foresight. Uh, Cavalier, Clive issue. Now, people usually say, yeah, but he's faster, but the speed is irrelevant, and I'll talk about that more in detail when we talk about Clive and Matilda. Um, the, the resistance would be nice for a couple maps, but again, not that big of a deal. See further Clive and Matilda discussion later. <laughs> God. Um, uh, Archer, he's actually really nice as an Archer, because he's just Dreadloop, but with less stats, but still good enough stats to be good. But, early game performance is lacking, because early game Archer is bad, and you get Python, so no point. Uh, and now the last one, oh, Mage. God. Do not make Cliff a fucking Mage, holy hell. Worst unit I've ever used in SOV. Uh, my, my Cliff wasn't even screwed, and he was terrible. Um, he has worse speed on average than Tobin until like level 12 or something. And your mages are not getting that high. Even if you want to say you're using them long term, and that's the argument you want to make for why the, the speed growth will matter later. Um, he gets Excalibur at like level 9 or 11 or something. It doesn't matter, it's higher than 6, uh, which is when uh, Tobin got it. Uh, fun fact. That's a nerf from Gaiden, because apparently they thought it was too strong, but he still only got it at level 7 in that game. Um, it's just so bad. His early game is worse. His late game is technically better, I guess, but you don't reach the late game on a mage. Um, there's no point. Just don't make him a mage, yeah, please. I, don't, I, I don't beg what, of you. I don't know why this is popular, because I tried it, I think I've tried it at least twice, and it was never really satisfying. Like, mages, first of all, long term, just never really work, I feel like, in, in Alms Route. But Cliff, especially, his speed is so bad. I have the, the exact same experience as you, actually. I I had a Cliff that I thought was getting speed screwed. I was like, whoa, he's never getting speed level ups. He's so slow, he's getting doubled. And I looked at his average, it's like, oh, wait, minus one above average. Like, what? So bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also, uh, so, some people will argue, just give him the speed to patch up his early game. No! Why would you do that? You can give the speed to Tobin, and instead of going from 4 speed to 7, and speed tying the enemy soldiers, Tobin is gonna go from four or 6 speed to 8 speed, with one less booster, and double them. Yeah, because I assume they click, like, avoid getting doubled by the speed shrines, and that's kind of where it ends. Like, very yeah. cool. Fun fact, Cliff has one attack speed at base. <laughs> the fast mage, am I right? Because his growth is higher. But, you know, base is yeah. growth, I guess? It's the lesson learned here. Uh, like, I don't, uh, like, don't want to make fun of people because it, it is this canon class. But, man, it is so bad I do not get why people do it outside of canon or just not caring. Mm -hmm. If you're, like, arguing about efficiency and you ever say the words mage Cliff, please stop. <laughs> I... I think this is, like I said at the beginning, I think this might be because people tried it 
and they like what they got somehow. I don't know why. I know Soen, for example, is a big fan of Mage Cliff mm -hmm. or just Cliff in general. But yeah, I don't. Maybe they got blessed. Yeah, maybe, but they got. That's got to be a lot of blessing. I don't know. I don't know what the idea is. The point yeah. is, it's not very good. So we've been going for an hour. Shall we move on to the last villager? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, gray. So I personally put Gray on my own list at uh, B minus, just above Foresight. Why? He's the worst merc. He has bad res, and as I've explained with Cliff, that's incredibly significant. Cav and Armor Knight. Don't even think about it. Cav, same issue as everyone else. Clive exists. Armor Knight, his base speed isn't bad, or isn't good. His growth isn't good. He's basically Lucas, but you already have Lucas, so what's the point? Um, and then Archer, Villager Archer bad. He doesn't have good speed. He's just not that good. Yeah. Now, I feel like with the... That sounds terrible. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I was just really quick. Um... I feel like Grey has a reputation for being good as a Merc because people make him a Merc, but I feel like he's forced to go to Merc, which patches up his speed issue, but it doesn't actually make Grey good. He's just going off of like how good Mercenary is because it's the only way to fix his stats. Yeah, yeah, uh, but the thing is, there is there is another fat mecha. Oh, yes. You can go magic. Ah, yes. Magical Grey. Now, this sounds like a meme, but I, because I wanted to have specific numbers for this so that no one could argue against me, okay. um, I, I pulled up the spreadsheet of enemy stats and I compared Archer Gray to, and for the record, Merc Gray is the exact same because Merc Gray has the same attack as Archer Gray. <laughs> um, anyways, I compared them to the soldiers in Southern Outpost. Do, do you want to take a guess at how much damage he does to them as an archer? Three. Exactly. Nice. And if he doubled, he would do six, wow. which... That's a five round. He five rounds generic-ass soldiers. That sounds good to me. Now, <laughs> as a... <laughs> as a mage, Sign he does 12. <laughs> nice. Doesn't double, right? It's just, Sadly. It's, it's doesn't problem. double. Yeah. He just does 12. Yeah. Also, Mage is bulkier. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, he's less bulky if you got doubled, admittedly, but you can give him a shield, and with the shield, he'll be roughly on par. Um, and that also means you can use him for swap, if you want, mm -hmm. uh, in like niche situations where you need Claire doing something else. Mm -hmm. um, and um, th there's also situations where you can actually one round some things. Um, if he procs uh, damage uh, once, I believe, he will one round the Steel Bow Archer in Southern Outpost. Um, which, is it likely? Is it unlikely? It's, I'd say it's about 50 50, because he's probably got a, a couple levels by then. Um, and then, uh, if he gets a speed and an attack level uh, by Zofia Gate, he can also one round the Iron Bow Archers next to the door. So, like, he's actually really close to some one round thresholds. And then, you know, it's just general chip utility, basically, because enemies will never have really amazing res. So, he can always, like, at least chip in and just, you know, bring other units closer to killing. And. The main advantage, outside of all that, is that it requires less EXP, which enables things like the Dread Loop to begin with, because you can f funnel more into your Merg than if you were training of all the villagers. Yeah, short-term mage good, long-term mage bad, and then every other yeah. path. Although is... I will say, uh, I will say, if you give him a speed ring at uh, Sage bases plus one uh, for attack, he will one round Barons with Sagite. Sagitte is always good for the funny factor, ain't it? Uh, I think you wanted him... Well, outside of funny, uh, I'd personally put him above Foresight because he does a lot in Act 1. Like, mm -hmm. sure, he's not as good long-term, but Foresight requires a decent amount of investment to get going long-term. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what, uh, I would say it's not just funny, it's more like, if your Grey is getting blessed for whatever reason, it is entirely possible that it'll be close to promo, and at that point, it's not un unreasonable to expect him to get an attack proc. Mm -hmm. And then just... You know, kill a Baron. Uh, it won't happen in the vast majority of playthroughs because you're not going to promote him, but if you did, it's not that unreasonable. Yeah, fair. Uh, okay. That's all the villagers. I think we want a Python to move along with the villagers. 
before you go yes, to the speedruns. Yes, so it's it's because of the archer thing. So I was explaining that villager archer is bad. So why is that? Well, uh, there's a few reasons. One, you get the iron bow at the same time as foresight, and, and only one person can use it. Or yeah, as Python. Well, they get joined the same. Yeah, that's like what I'm a saying. thousand wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's a few maps where you need an archer, so it's it's a good thing then that Python's pretty good, right? Um, now, part of this implies grinding. Why is that? Well, I gotta talk about efficient grinding. Oh God. Um, you can kill nine soul or nine bandits in T shrine uh, in one turn by chipping them into kill range and AI manipulating them to suicide on enemy phase. Now, am I suggesting that a casual is going to do that? No, but they can do the exact same grind in two turns if they want to. Now, why would you grind? So here's the situation. Python needs to promote. I think we all agree on that, right? Yeah, for Act 3. Uh, Let's go to Sniper, right? Yeah. yeah. So when can we promote him? The first shrine is the one before uh, Zofia Gate, and the second shrine is the one after uh, after Southern Zofia Forest, like the ca the Cavalier map three five. Um, yeah. And if so, you have three options. One, you wait until after three five to promote him. That's not good. He's gonna be h hella useless. An archer right? in three, an early three. Yeah, that's bad. An archer in like mid act three, you mean? Well, yeah, like, up until the it's... until until up until three. Yeah, five, yeah, it's awful. <laughs> yeah, that that's awful. So let's not even consider that. Uh, second option, you feed him a ton. Maybe after Arcanus Forest, you go back and promote him. Wrong. You get a map spawn, and the map spawn is basically mandatory grinding because you're gonna have to kill it, and it's gonna slow you down and cost you turns, right? Yeah. And on top of that, it's a pain to deal with, because those enemies are super strong, they might not be in a very convenient location. If you fight them on, like, the Burkut map, they cover the entire map and they're a pain. If you fight them on, like, Arcanus Forest, there's a ton of terrain and they're a pain. If you fight them on Zofia Gate, they spawn on the other side of the map and it takes, like, five turns. If you fight them on, you know, 3-1, it's a big map, it's gonna take you a lot of turns. So, so yeah. there's a turn penalty no matter what, right? Yeah, and like, if you, so if you have to choose between just... fighting those and like the Thief Shrine Bandits, I'll take the Thief Shrine yeah. Bandits any day. And it's gonna take about the same amount of turns, maybe even less. And you're gonna be able to funnel EXP into your other units while you're at it. So the Python grind is not just Python, because he can't kill all nine by himself. So you're funneling EXP into your other units while you're training Python. It's gonna help Silk get to warp because she's probably a little short, right? It'll help um, your uh, mercenary maybe get to um, Myrmidon, which will jumpstart their EXP into Act Three. It'll help Clive get to Paladin, which makes him so much better for Zofia Gate. Uh, it will help uh, Foresight reach Armor Knight, for instance. It's so helpful. Uh, that I'm almost glad that Phyton has such a shit base level, because it means everyone else gets to benefit by going into Thief Shrine with him. <laughs> Benefiting from lack of success. Yeah. So, obviously, despite the grinding being efficient in the context of using Python, you still have to penalize him for that a little, right? Yeah, it's, like it's still yeah. grinding. Yeah, like, you still grinded. So, you, you can't just give him a fast, but... Uh, it is something you have to do to use them, and that's a lot of, you know, why he's good. That's the context. Um, so, you should expect to have him Sniper at the beginning of Act, uh, act 3, which is going to make him really good for um, Arcanus Forest. For the first map, you might be able to fight some of the enemy archers. Uh, for... Um, uh, the big one is Tree 6. That's a map with a lot of archers and a bow knight boss. Um, if you give him a killer bow, uh, he will carry that map for you. Uh, he's still going to need help because he's going to need a lot of dodges otherwise. But he's going to be really good on that map. And then he's also going to be really good on Sluice Gate, especially to killer bow the boss across the wall. Um, and then he becomes a bow knight. And, well, you know what bow knights are like. Mm hmm. Even if they're not like so, looped cliff, they're still like super useful. Just yeah. generally found that kind of similar to Leon, 
he's more carried by his class of the Killabo than by his stats than anything. Like he's not a machine that deletes yeah. everything, but it's still Hunter's Volley. It's still a really good player phase nuke that can enemy phase one or two guys without dying, which is still mm -hmm. valuable. Admittedly, he has really good offensive growth. It's like I think 50-50 around there. Okay. For like uh, attack speed. Yeah, I think Python suffers from a bad first impression for a lot of players because his first real mm -hmm. map is Sophia Gate, or yeah, Sophia Gate with the avoid tiles, so his hit rate looked really bad. And then Arcus mm -hmm. Forest has a similar problem with the forests, but generally I don't think he's yeah, that much more Although that's inaccurate. a skill issue. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a skill uh, issue. I mean, unironically though, um, if you need a tip for, for Arcanus Horus, plan your moves in advance so that the way you bait an enemy will force them to attack while they're not on terrain. Yeah. And then you don't have to deal with the avoid. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to do that always, but it's a good general tip. I uh, sometimes you have to eat the penalty, but like I'm maybe on like one or two guys, and then you can just, you know, uh, dogpile that guy and kill him. Mm hmm. Okay. Like, as a Fire Emblem player, seeing a 59 hit is enough to make you shrivel up in fear. But if you've ever played XCOM, like, you'll know 59 is not that unreliable if you have a lot of shots. <laughs> True. So where does this leave Python as a, uh, as a um, character? I, I'd put him above Dean. He has a similar issue, but he carries more. Okay, I can see it. He also has more availability. Mm-hmm. Post-production mecha here again. At this point, we have been going for an hour, and we still have a couple of characters left, including an in-depth discussion of Clive, Matilda, and Zeke. Like I said at the beginning, I decided that in hindsight, splitting the session into two would work better, so you guys will get the rest of this next time. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.